For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Hello, everyone. This is Monica Dennington, forecasting to you live from the desert of Phoenix, Arizona, as we come together to learn how to have church in the end times. Today's Sunday morning special can be found at monicadennington.com, and that's going to be session four, uh, which is the conclusion of the Plant Your Flag, Establishing a Kingdom series. You're not going to want to miss this. It's called No Cowards Allowed, Taking the Territory. This is going to teach us what stewardship is really about and um, and why it, it requires courage for us to enter into the kingdom of God, as it says in Revelation, that cowards will not be part of that city. Um, so we want to know what Jesus means by that and how he expects us to sow our lives into the kingdom right now. And uh, we'll talk about that in just a minute. But I want you to go to monicadennington.com. That's where you're going to get your message. Go ahead and pull it up right now in another browser. Um, but uh, if you go there, you're going to have your three buttons. And those are um, the ways that you are going to interact with us this morning. Prayer donate and decision. The prayer request button is where you can put in your prayer requests all week long. We will pray for you live on the air as well as uh, as soon as we get those prayer requests. Those receive first priority here. And then the donate button is where you can go and support this ministry, help us to reach more people with the gospel, help us, you know, just to, to meet our expenses and all of those things. And that's your way of sowing into the kingdom and giving your offering this morning as part of your worship as well. That's where you can do that, the donate button. And then the decision button. That is the most important button because that's where you're going to respond to God's word. I want to hear about how God's word is affecting your heart today as God is speaking to you through his word. Um, I want to hear about what God is doing in your life and the decisions that you are making uh, to move into love and obedience every day. Um, that's, you know, what our relationship with God is about step by step, loving him by obeying his commands and learning what he wants from us every single day. So I want to hear about those things and your praise reports. You can do that using the decision button. Today's scripture reading is going to be out of Luke 19. It's 11 through 27. So let's read this. This is going to go along with your Sunday morning special this morning very nicely. Um, this is the parable of the 10 minus. And um, we're going to start in Luke 19, 11. <clears throat> While they were listening to this, he went on to tell them a parable because he was near Jerusalem and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. He said, a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. So he called 10 of his servants and gave them 10 minus. Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. But his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. He was made king, however, and returned home. Then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. The first one came and said, sir, your mina has earned 10 more. Well done, my good servant, his master replied, because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter. Take charge of 10 cities. The second came and said, Sir, your mina has earned five more. His master answered, You take charge of five cities. Then another servant came and said, Sir, here is your mina. I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth. I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and reap what you did not sow. His master replied, I will judge you by your own words, you wicked servant. You knew, did you, that I'm a hard man, taking out what I did not put in and reaping what I did not sow? Why then didn't you put the money on deposit so that when I came back, I could have collected it with interest? Then he said to those standing by, take his mina away from him and give it to the one who has ten minas. Sir, they said he already has ten he replied, I tell you that to everyone who has more will be given. But as for the one who has nothing, even what he has will be taken away. But those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. So this is a picture of the kingdom. And we're going to talk about this um, for a few minutes because this morning, what God wants you to know is that scripture that we started out with, that you have a future with God. He said, I have plans to give you hope and a future. And that future is this kingdom that God is establishing. And that's what we're talking about with the Sunday morning special. 
this kingdom that Jesus is establishing is forever. What you're experiencing in your life right now, whatever it is, I want you to look around. Some of you may be pretty content with your life, but as evil is rising, you know, a lot of things, the Bible says that it's going to get difficult for everyone. Uh, even, even the rich at some point, you know, all those that we think that they have all their stuff together, um, that it's going to get difficult for everyone because everyone's hearts will be growing cold. The great delusion, the spirit of antichrist and lawlessness is falling as prophesied. And as a result of that, people's hearts grow cold. And the Bible says these will be very difficult times because family members will fight against family members. They will, you know, the, the members of a man's house will be his enemies. Um, you know, and these are the things that really get to us, right? No, ma- no amount of money um, can plug up those holes where our relationships are torn apart and all the things that matter to us are torn apart. And when we look around and see that kind of evil, what we need to realize is that Jesus' kingdom is coming. And this kingdom is passing away. So we need to make a conscious decision this morning to remember that whatever's going on around you, if you've got a mess in your life and your relationships and your personal life, if you are addicted, if you, you know, have problems that you don't know how to solve, you need to remember that God is there for you. Okay. And that he has promised you this, that no matter what's happening in this temporal realm, You have hope and a future in the kingdom of God. So what he's teaching you in this uh, parable about the 10 minus and the, the five and the one, he's teaching you to invest in your future. In this world, if you try to hold on to the things of this world, there is no future. You know, because everything is going to be passing away. Evil is going to come into full bloom. It's going to do its its corrupting thing. And it's going to be shown for what it is. Satan's kingdom cannot stand because it's a divided kingdom. A kingdom, you know, our own personal kingdoms that we build that are based on money. Those can't stand either because all of those things are going to fall. But what you do know is that no matter how messy it gets here, that if you put your hope and if you invest yourself in God and his kingdom that is coming, that he has plans for you to give you a hope and a future. And that is a promise. And isn't it so comforting to know that there's actually a plan? You know, this isn't pie in the sky. Jesus knows you. You may be thinking, well, I know for some of those other people who you know, maybe are better people than I am or haven't messed up their life as much as I have. You know, I can see how God would have a hope and a future for them, but I've been addicted for so long or I've made such a mess of my relationships. I just, I'm in the middle of a mess right now. I don't know how to fix it. You need to understand that this promise, this promise is for you. When God says he has a plan to get you from this kingdom to that kingdom, it means he has a roadmap for you from where you are, not just somebody else. He's got a plan. So what you need to do is decide to invest in that kingdom where you do have a future. Okay, so a couple of things I wanted to point out about this, uh, this passage. People talk a lot about good stewardship, but it's really about loyalty to the kingdom and really understanding where your future is. When we invest in the future, which is what these three guys were, in, you know, instructed to do. Because Jesus, as you know, Jesus is the king in this parable. He went away to go be crowned king and then come back. So there are several players here. And one group of players is the people who send the delegation after him saying, we don't want you to be our king, right? And you're going to see a lot of that in the world. That means that if you are the person that's been left there to uh, steward God's kingdom, to steward Jesus' kingdom until he comes back with that crown on his head and his army at his back, then you're going to come under some opposition, aren't you? If there are, if there's a whole group of people that have sent a delegation after him saying, we don't want you to be our king, just as we read last week in Psalm 2, where it says, why do the nations rage? God has chosen his king. That's the Messiah, Jesus Christ. But they do rage. And if you are the person that is standing in that place of authority, you are going to feel that pressure because not everyone agrees with that. You just have to have faith in your future, faith in your king and the one who is crowning him king, which is God, the father and creator of all things, that nothing can stand against him and that his kingdom is the one that will never fail. You have to have faith in that. So first of all, you have to believe in this future in order to invest in it. If you don't really believe in it, 
then you're not going to invest in it. And then, you know, you have to know that, um, when you invest something, that means that you're putting it away for the future. So, you know, whenever you put money in an investment account, you don't have the use of it. You're putting it away. You're not enjoying it right now. You're not um, using it to, you know, go on vacation or, you know, uh, buy a fancy car. But instead, you're choosing to put it away for the future. So I want you to think about that today. As we go into our day, as you set apart some time to pray today, and just to worship God, think about what it means to invest in your future in this kingdom. Jesus tells you what it looks like here, okay? And he gives you a good example. You know, you may be looking at the guy with 10 minus and saying, oh, well, I, I'll never have that. You know, I'm, I'm small. You know, these people are doing great exploits, and I'm just a regular person. But God's not going to be judging you based upon what that person has or what they did with it. He's going to be judging what you did with the small little bit that he's given you. What has he given you? He's given you a life. He's given you breath every morning, hasn't he? He's given you the ability to wake up in the morning and love somebody. Maybe it's a stranger. Maybe somebody you work with. Certainly your family members. But he's given you something. And then he's also given us, many of us, uh, you know, things that we can uh, do in this world to bless other people physically. And the Bible talks specifically about the fact that we're to take care of the physical needs of our brothers and sisters when they're in need and we can help them. That's a way that you can invest in the kingdom. In fact, Jesus said that when he comes to judge us, he will look at us and say, did you feed me when I was poor? Did you take care of me when I was prison? Did, in prison? Did you take care of me when I was sick? And people will say, well, when did we see you in those situations? And he will say, "Whenever you, whatever you've done to the least of these, my brethren, you have done unto me. So, you know, invest in Jesus. Invest in Jesus' kingdom by taking your resources and putting them in other people in meeting needs, and also in promoting this kingdom and the authority of the Christ by uh, putting your money into spreading the gospel and the message of the kingdom, which is how Jesus taught us to establish this kingdom. He said that by that message, people will be saved, they will be kept, that the Holy Spirit will come in and keep them safe until the day of our redemption. So that's a very powerful way that you can invest in the future. But remember, that that future is what you're looking forward to. And when you invest in that, you're not going to have the use of that, that money, that time, that talent. You know, one way that you may be investing in the, in the kingdom is by choosing the path that God wants you to choose instead of the path that may seem like, you know, would be most advantageous to you in this life. He may be calling you, and we have a, a, a prayer request today that's very similar to this situation. Um, where somebody knows that God has a new thing for them that they're supposed to step into and they're nervous about it, but they know God has prepared them for it. A new path to take. God may be calling you to a new path, um, to a different path than you would have chosen, but when you make that decision, you are taking those minus that God has given you, that life that God has given you, and you're saying, I'm going to invest it in my future instead of just eating it all right now. I'm going to take this life and I'm going to plant it in the ground like a seed and follow the path that God is setting out for me, trusting that he is going to make something good out of it. And before um, we go, I want to point out one more thing. A lot of us don't do this out of fear because we think if we take this path or if we invest our money or our resources in the kingdom, maybe it won't turn out well. You know, maybe it won't have any fruit. And that is the mistake that the person with the one mina made because they did not have faith in the king. They did not have faith in the fact that what he had given them is blessed. And when you dedicate those things to the king, it's going to be blessed. And so they did the wrong thing. They hid it in the ground, you know. But what we have to do is have faith that just like when Jesus invests himself, he, he invested himself in this world by dying on a cross to pay for our sins. He wholly invested himself in us. As it said, he, he was planted in the, sea, in the ground and died like a seed so that he could produce a great harvest of many sons and daughters of the kingdom. Just like that, that sacrifice was blessed, that when you follow in his footsteps, his promise is that that is part of his plan for the future that he has for you. That's the way this kingdom works. And when you choose to follow him in his footsteps, you will also have the same blessing on those resources that you invest in the kingdom that, that he had. 
So you will have results. You don't have to be afraid. He is going to bless what you do, and it will make a difference in the kingdom. It will make a difference in people's lives. Even if you don't see it right away, don't worry. You do it by faith, knowing that you do have a hope and a future with God. So I want to encourage you today as we go. Um, we're going to go into prayer requests. And as we go into a mode of prayer, just listen to the Holy Spirit because the Spirit's going to be speaking to you about how you can invest yourself in this kingdom. Um, And also as you listen to the message today, it's really going to touch your heart. And remember to send me those decisions as well because I want to hear about what God is speaking to you. All right. So we're going to move on to prayer requests. (coughs) Pardon me. We have a few today. Lisa says, God has prepared me for something that's still a mystery to me. I'm not sure what my next steps will be. The time has come that I'm supposed to do this new thing, and Jesus has been very generous to me. Pray for um, my mind to heal from the damage of, from drug abuse in the past. And also she wants us to pray for an estranged relationship that she has. So let's pray for Lisa right now. Father in heaven. We come to you as the body of Christ. We are scattered like those dead bones in uh, in Ezekiel's valley, Lord God. But we know that we hear the voice calling us to come together. And we know that on our own we can do nothing. And we see evil all around us rising. But we are not afraid because we are running to you. And we know that you have plans. You have a great kingdom that is getting ready to be established. Your son is coming back to establish that kingdom on earth. And we are so privileged to be part of it. We thank you that you are here with us and that you are protecting us and that you have paid for our sins so that we can have free access to you. We praise you for all of these things because of your great love, Lord God, because you are worthy of our praise. And we lift up to you our sister Lisa as she steps out in faith to do your will and to do this new thing and take this new path that you have prepared for her. We pray for healing from all of her past uh, sins and, and drugs abuse and you know the things that life does to you that damage you I pray for healing Lord God along with all my brothers and sisters for Lisa in all of those areas and also uh, for her estranged relationship that you would make that relationship right and that you would bring righteousness to it and that you would move in the heart of the other person as well and that you would resolve it uh, according to your righteousness Lord God and that you would also give her peace in that that um, you are working and that you will lead her and guide her in that path to righteousness in that relationship, Lord God. I thank you for the great plans you have to use her. I pray that you would use her mightily and that many, many people would come to know the love of God through Lisa. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, We're going to pray for our friend uh, Michael today. Um, just for his family relationships, safety in his travels, and peace in his journey. And we're also going to pray for my dear friend Bonnie as she's recovering from surgery. Father in heaven, we lift up to you, Michael. We pray that he would find peace in his relationships, that he would, um, that you would, you know, bring those relationships together in the right time. It's so, you know, difficult when those things um, rear their ugly heads, you know, whenever we have problems um, with people that we love. And I just thank you that you are there to minister there and that you have a, a plan for the future, even if there's strife right now that there is a way uh, to bring healing in the future. And I pray that you would give those promises and speak them to Michael and that you would bless him and uh, those that he loves so much, Lord God, just bless them. And um, I pray for Michael and his journeys that you would just provide for him everything that he needs, that you would bring him great adventures that are from you, Lord God, and that you would protect him along the way. We also pray that you would give him peace in his journey in Jesus' name, and we thank you for him. Lord God, we pray for my dear friend Bonnie as she is recovering from surgery. We pray that your peace that passes understanding, that you would give that peace to her as she knows that that's what she needs. And um, Lord God, I pray that you would give it to her in abundance, that she would experience that peace and that she would know that she is being taken care of, that there is an artist that created every part of her um, that is wonderfully made and that that artist truly cares about every pain and everything she's going through. I pray that she would know that and that she would have peace. I also pray for relief um, in her trials and, and, uh, and healing after this surgery in Jesus name. Thank you so much, Lord God, for your gracious ear, uh, for even giving us an audience. You are the, the God of the universe and yet you have time for us. 
We're so grateful to you for your love, Lord God. We lift up our hearts in praise to you, and we ask you this week, please show us what we can do to invest ourselves in our future with you and our King, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Um, right now, you're going to go over to MonicaDennington.com. Don't forget to use your three buttons, prayer, donate, decision, and then remember to enjoy today's message, which is no cowards allowed taking the territory.